In this tutorial, we will discuss the near shading, the shadings produced by near objects, which draw visible shades on the PV field. The treatment of near shadings will be done with a detailed 3D description of the full PV system and its environment. During the simulation, shading calculations are performed at each hour with each irradiance component. Diffuse, albedo, beam and circumsolar, treated individually to accurately evaluate shading losses. For the diffuse component, we define a factor as an integral over all sky directions. This will result in a shading factor for diffuse, which is independent of the sun position. For the albedo component, we perform an integral according to the surrounding obstacles at ground level. This will result in a shading factor for albedo, independent of the sun position. For the beam component, we consider two kinds of losses, irradiance losses and electrical losses. Irradiance losses refer to the reduction of sunlight that reaches the solar cells. We also call this linear losses. Electrical losses happen when PV components do not all receive the same irradiance. In this case, this will lead to additional electrical mismatch losses, called electrical shading losses in PVCs. For the circumsolar component, we apply the same shading factor as for the beam. However, the circumsolar component will not produce electrical shadings. PVCs provides two different ways to treat these electrical losses. Shading factor according to partitions, also called according to strings, which is a rough evaluation given an upper limit to the total shading loss. Detailed electrical calculation according to the exact positioning and interconnection of each module in the DC array. Note that the model equivalent to the according to strings mode to account for the electrical losses may also be used with unlimited orientations. These orientations are an alternative way to include mutual shadings in the simulation without constructing a 3D scene. In the near shading, clicking on the construction perspective button opens a new window where the 3D scene is located. The top menu contains access to all the general tools and actions. The top toolbar provides a quick access to the most useful tools and each toolbar can be customized. All tools sub-panels are located in the right panel. You can find the list of all current scene objects, orientation, orientations management and groups of objects and zones of tables in the scene objects tab. In the file menu, you can find options such as read scene, building and object if you want to import elements already created and saved in your workspace. You can also import a 3D scene in various formats, as well as import satellite images and topography from the web for your specific site. To include the topography data, activate this option. You can simplify the terrain by double-clicking on the ground object and click Simplify to reduce the number of polygons. In the Create menu, you can create new objects. In the Elementary Shading Object window, you find a list of various editable shading objects. Some types of objects can be defined as thin. Doing so will decrease their electrical shading effect by a given percentage. By default, all objects cast shadows on the PV fields, but unchecking this box will disable this behavior and the object will not be used in the calculations. In the Create menu, you will find the possibility to create any type of PV planes and arrays. In the Select menu, you will find specific tools and how to easily select specific elements in the scene. In the Edit menu, 
You find functions to modify objects and selections, as well as the tool to set automatic altitude to adapt the height of the objects in the scene. In the Transform menu, you can find, for instance, Transform Domes or East-West systems to two sets of fixed tilted planes or fixed tilted planes to trackers. It is also possible to transform a surface to a PV plane. Activate the rendering option and click on the surface you wish to transform to a PV plane. You can either right click or go to the Transform tab to transform the full surface to a PV area. In the View menu, you find the different perspective possible of your scene, as well as their short comments. In the rendering options, you can for instance enable real-time shadows. In the Tools menu, you find tools for measurement and comprehension. Another way to place PV tables on your scene is to create zones. In this tool, you can draw an area you wish to fill with tables. Define the field properties and click Field Zone. With the Zone tool, you can also define tracking fields. In the Tools menu, you find the window to set the tracker's diffuse shading definition, as well as the backtracking management. In the Tools menu, you also find the list and management of objects, Control G. In this window, all of the objects and PV tables of your 3D scene are listed. Each column can be filtered and sorted in ascending or descending order. You can select objects directly in the list and the selected objects will remain selected in the shading scene. The fields are editable. If several objects are selected, the modification will be applied in a grouped way to all of the selected objects. In the Orientation Management tool, you will find the list of the defined orientations and the amount of PV modules in each orientation, both what is defined in the 3D scene and in the system definition. It is important that the 3D scene and the system definition approximately match. From this window, you can create new orientations, drag the different fields to a new orientation, create averages, etc. If, for instance, the system is placed on a slope or difficult terrain. By running a shading animation, you can see how your system is affected by various shading elements. The shading shown here correspond to the linear shading, that is, the grey areas indicated a loss in irradiance. However, the electrical effects of the shading are not taken into account. To calculate the electrical effects according to module strings, you have to define the so-called partitions of the tables. The goal of the partition model is to define rectangles, partitions representing a group of PV cells that will cease to produce energy once partial shading are sufficiently spread out on it. See the help in the link below for more information of how the partition should be defined according to the PV module type and orientation and the cabling of your system. When you run the shading animation again, you'll notice yellow areas, which represent the zones affected by the electrical impact of shading. The shading factor calculation is evaluated every hour of the simulation, and therefore can take a lot of time. When using the according to module string option, you can choose between a fast or a slow calculation mode. In fast mode, PVSYST instead generates a table of shading factor for specific sky orientations and interpolates the shading value from this table. For each orientation, you can click on the table icon to view the corresponding shading factor table. This same information is also shown as an ISO diagram, providing a quick and intuitive view of how shading affects performance throughout the day and year. 
To use the detailed electrical calculation option, you have to carefully define each string in the module layout window for the calculation of the IV characteristics of each module in a string.